What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we gotta talk about what went down on this episode of Friday Night Smackdown. Uh, Smackdown was in Madison Square Garden tonight. I think over 19,000 people were in attendance and they were electric tonight. It was a fun show. And what happened at the, the beginning of the show and the end of this ending of this show was fantastic. Definitely has me hyped for what's going to happen at Money in the Bank and also what's going to potentially happen at this year's SummerSlam. So we got to talk about, obviously, the most important thing that's been going on right now, this whole new bloodline saga that we've been on. So they cut to the back. You see a black SUV pop out and you see uh, Solo uh, hop out with uh, um, Tonga Loa and uh, Tama Tonga. They both hop out and you see Paul Heyman with them as well. Paul Heyman's trying to talk to him, trying to talk to Solo like, hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm I'm trying to be your wise man. So I, I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. You know, like, you know, where, where, where like, what's, what, what's going on with this whole Jacob Fatu thing? Where is he? Do you know where he's at? And he stopped him. He's like, look, we're about to go out here, do this acknowledgement ceremony. I want you as my 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 wise man. I need you as my wise man. And, you know, essentially, you know, I, I got this. You know, just just trust me. So they're walking through Gor Gorilla. And they're about to walk to the ring. <clears throat> and then you see the camera cut back. And then there's another black SUV. And it's Cody, KO, and Randy Orton. And they walk in with a purpose. They not walking with no bullshit. They walking with a purpose, and the purpose is to fight. Soon as they get out there, they start brawling on the entrance way. It was chaos. Such a great way to start off SmackDown. Last week, it ended in a brawl. Them getting packed up. This week, they said, nah, 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 nah. We are going to bring the fight to you. Love seeing the side of Cody. KO's always on that timing. Randy's always down for that type of timing. But to see Cody out there leading the charge, like, I want to fucking fight. And that's what happened. They're brawling all over the arena. And you have Kevin Owens and Tonga Loa fighting by the side stage area where the production crew and crates and stuff is at. So Tonga Loa ends up getting uh, set on a table, you know, and Kevin Owens beat him down to lay him on the table. He goes to this little area above the production area and does a nice little swanton bomb off. Uh, the elevated platform through the table down to the ground below Tangaloa was essentially taken out of the game like that such a bruh that shit was a cool spot to see at the start of smackdown like that shit was great so after uh Tangaloa got taken out and he's officially out the game uh you know obviously it was a numbers game so uh Tama Tonga and Solo try to retreat. That's when some JAG securities come out there with Nick Aldis. And pretty much everybody gets on the microphone saying, nah, bro, we want to fight. We ain't waiting to money in the bank. We we want to fight. Apparently, it was supposed to be a um, six-man tag match that they're going to have at money in the bank, which I do think is going to be fun. Can't wait to see that. <clears throat> But they wanted to fight right there. They were tired of the bloodline stuff. They want to end this now. Nick Aldis is like, no. So all the JAG security get packed up. And then Nick Aldis comes out there with some JAG cops. And then they finally escort them out the arena. So essentially, we had to wait to the end of the show to get this uh, uh, bloodline um, acknowledgement ceremony. So we get to the end of the show. Everybody's out there. Paul Heyman looks like a complete wreck, bro. He just does not even want to be out there. <clears throat> and this is when they announce Jacob Fatu coming down to be with them in the bloodline. And I'm not going to lie. Jacob Fatu's theme music and entrance, the whole package, is pretty damn good. It fits him. You got the fire blazing up as as you know before he even comes out there's like a whole bunch of fire blazing up it looks dope i like what they did there they 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 did their thing with his his theme music and entrance and the old overall ambiance on it of it it fits his character the, the samoan werewolf it, it fit it fits him 
It works. So he comes out there looking like a goddamn menace with the facial expressions and everything. So at this point, you got everybody in the ring. They come back from commercial break. And he goes one by one asking everyone in the ring. Well, first he says, New York, acknowledge me. Paul Heyman's shocked that he even did this. Like, he's shocked that he's saying this. The crowd's like, no, we're not. Fuck you, Solo. We want Roman. We ain't acknowledging you. So then, one by one, like Roman would do, he would make everyone say, acknowledge him. Tama Tonga did it. Tonga Loa did it. And the whole time, Jacob Fatou's just pacing back and forth like a goddamn menace, just looking like he's about to rip someone to shreds. He finally goes, goes to the front, and he says, you know, I acknowledge you, Solo. So everyone acknowledged. Then it was time for Paul Heyman. But this time, it wasn't, it wasn't just a normal acknowledgement. This time, he ended up pulling out the lay. If you guys know, Roman Reigns will wear the lay. I believe that's what it is, it's, you know, called. But, he, you know, the stuff that they wear, uh, part of their culture. Um, and Paul Heyman would, you know, usually put it on him, you know what I'm saying, for the matches or after he won the match or whatever. That's what Solo wanted Paul Heyman to do. He gave it to Paul Heyman. And he wanted Paul Heyman to put it on him. And he wanted Paul Heyman to acknowledge him. So at this point, crowds chanting no. Paul is selling this like a million fucking bucks. He's crying. Tears. His eyes are red. He's crying. His beard is unkempt. He's just going through it. He doesn't even want to do it. He's praying like he doesn't want to do this. And all the while, while he's contemplating you have Jacob Fatu just pacing, waiting for him to not to say no so he can murder him. So, finally, he picks up the mic. He's crying. He's like, you know I love you, Solo. But I do not acknowledge you as the tribal chief. The crowd goes crazy. And at that point, you knew. Paul Heyman's time in the bloodline has come to an end. And Paul Heyman will be going to the nearest medical facility. Because right after that, Solo loses it, hits him with a Samoan spike. Drops him instantly. I mean, dropped him instantly. Paul's selling it. And then I'm like, no, they're going to kill him some more. So they drag Paul's carcass to the middle of the ring. They tell Jacob Fatu to go up to the top. Jacob Fatu goes up to the top and hits him with a, a flying head. But I thought it was going to be a splash. It would look, it would end up being like a flying head, but just killed him. Killed him in the middle of the ring. Security officials trying to get out there. And then they said, no, 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 we're not done. They dragged his carcass outside the ring, cleared out the announce table, they all picked him up for a bloodline powerbomb through the table, packing up Paul Heyman, and Paul Heyman was laying face down on the ground, dead. As you hear Solo saying, I'm not good enough for you. I'm not good enough for you. Fish was trying to check on him. Crowds chanting, F you, Solo. And then Jacob Fatu put the lay over Solo Sokoa and acknowledging him as the new tribal chief as they all put up the ones and Paul Heyman has been essentially sent to the gulags. This was fucking fantastic. If you're able to make people care about Paul Heyman and have sympathetic feelings for Paul Heyman, one of the most despicable guys in wrestling, when you can make fans care about Paul Heyman being packed up like this you've done your job Solo is getting so much good heat is his heat is rivaling Dominic Mysterio's heat he's getting that level of heat now because everyone sees him as this fake imposter of Roman Reigns before people wanted him to be the guy to take down Roman Reigns now People want Roman Reigns to take him down. It's crazy how things can change in just a few months. 
and this is fantastic. I love what they did here. Packing up Paul Heyman was a really great move because now Paul is out. He's no longer a part of this bloodline stuff. Now, they're going to just run amok. It's going to be chaos. There's not going to be a wise man at that we know of right now. And you know this is going to be even better when Paul Heyman does return back, but he doesn't return by himself. He may return with the Usos. He may even return with Roman Reigns. Maybe some new help. Who knows? But this was great. This was a another fantastic week, and they ended off the show with the bloodline essentially looking like true deviants out there, and I loved every second of it. Can't wait for that six-man tag. That shit's going to be so much fun, man. Comment down below. Let me know. How did you feel about Paul Heyman getting packed up, man? Did, did, it, did, it, did it hurt you? Did it, did it send some actual sad emotions to see Paul Heyman like that? Because it did for me. I was like, ah, I feel bad for Paul, bro. He's been going through it. So to see him get packed up like this was actually, for the first time in my wrestling viewing experience, it was actually pretty sad to see. But y'all let me know how y'all feel about this whole bloodline stuff. They are cooking, in my opinion. Appreciate all the love and support y'all showing on the channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still on the speed of YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.